Let me introduce my guests in studio with me. Uh, to my far left is Simon Joroge, who was adopted. We also have Leah Kigwada, who is a lawyer and interacts quite a bit with a lot of these adoption cases. And last but not least is Karazom uh, Mukami, who is an adoptive parent. And you actually adopted a little girl. 11 months old now so you'll be telling us about that experience but let me begin with you Leah mm -hmm. because um, for those watching and listening to what Louise had to go through granted it was many years back um, and one of the very worrying aspects was she went through the whole legal process she had the paperwork she had an entire paper trail to show what she had done but when it came to giving the child back to the biological parents mm -hmm. nothing official you know, and, and of course, that's a fear for a lot of adoptive parents. What if that happens to me? Mm -hmm. uh, what should they do to safeguard themselves from such a scenario, for instance? Let me say that, um, I mean, just say what you've said also, that it's very rare. Yeah. Because, you know, some stories can would ca discourage people from adopting. Mm. And then once people are discouraged from adopting, it means very many children then miss out on families. And there are very many children who need families. But um, what... Ha experience was a long time ago yeah. a lot of things changed after that in that um, after that you know there are adoption societies that are licensed and are registered yearly by the by the children by the children's department mm. and the thing to do is please don't start at the children's home don't because your first step should be go to an adoption agency okay. an adoption society the adoption society will assess you and find you fit to adopt. And then the adoption society will match you with a child who is free for adoption. Starting at the children's home, finding a child, falling, you know, like loving this child and then taking them home is completely, it's just a setup for heartbreak. Mm. So I think the lesson to learn from that is that, yes, subsequently things changed and societies are, there are many societies, there are five and they are licensed. And Please, start with an adoption society. Don't start at the... If you start at the children's home, go to the children's home to serve, okay. to help, yeah. to volunteer, to help with the babies. But don't... Um, don't attach to a child because it's heartbreak not just for you, yeah. but also for the child whom you'll take home. And then you find out that, you know, they are not free for adoption. Really quickly, before I get to Simon, uh, what, what is the process for someone who's interested mm -hmm. in terms of application? Uh, how do you become eligible for, for the process? Mm -hmm. What do you need to have in place? Okay, so um, the law sets down certain standards. And um, of course, there's the age requirements. Mm -hmm. You have to be 25 years old and above. You can't be more than 65 years old, but if you're over 65 years old and there are special circumstances, yeah. you can adopt. And then if, you're a, if, you, if you want to adopt jointly with somebody else, you have to be a married couple. Okay. You have to have been married for at least um, three years. And then a single lady can adopt a girl and a single man can adopt a boy. Okay. But a single lady can adopt a boy if you show certain special circumstances. Mm -hmm. And a single man can also adopt a girl if you show certain circumstances. Although I have to say that's, that's rare. Yeah. It's a single yeah. man adoption is very rare as compared to single ladies adopting. So once you've gone, you met those requirements, mm -hmm. uh, you go to the adoption agency. You go to the adoption society. Mm -hmm. They assess you now. They look at you, you go, because those are global, general yeah. requirements. They assess you specifically, and they go to ascertain that you are fit. Uh, your you you know to ascertain and to uh, uh, that you're fit, that you're mm -hmm. a fit adopter, mm -hmm. and then they put you through a case committee. They all have case committees. They put you through a committee that then looks at you again, looks, vets you, and then they will match you with a child who has already been declared free for adoption okay. and whose paperwork has all come together to show that there's nobody out there looking for that child. Yes. There's no family that's waiting to mm -hmm. see their child again. It's not that it's a temporary situation of somebody going through some hardship mm -hmm. and will come back for their child. Then you will be placed with a child who's been declared free for adoption and then you and you know and and the child will then then you go through a legal pro after the, you have the child for three months i'm okay. jumping the gun you have the child for three months the law requires you to stay with the child mm -hmm. for three months before you can then go to court to consolidate and uh and you know and make that relationship permanent for life and how long does that generally take that that process um, I would say give yourself nine to 12 months mm -hmm. to finish the legal process included. Okay. Yeah, to finish the court process. Give yourself nine to 12 months. Maybe, 
you know, a little give or take, you know, life happens. Yeah. So give or take a little bit more. But um, yeah, generally it should take about maybe nine to 12 months if everything goes smoothly and you go at it exactly. without taking breaks. Simon, tell us uh, your story. Uh, how old were you when you were adopted? I would say an infant. I don't have an exact age. Okay. I think I just have photos that maybe about six months old. Um, so the scene I was adopted as an infant, mm -hmm. going by the photos that I've seen and going that I don't have any memories of the process myself. So as per my story, I really don't know where to start. You know, you're telling me to tell you my whole 33 <laughs> years of life, <laughs> which, which has been it's, my it's story. It's quite, I know, we'll be yeah. here all night if that's the case. But <laughs> <laughs> when when you, uh, you grew up in this family now, not knowing that you're adopted, um, how, did, how were you integrated into the family? Because you said you came in as an infant, so you grew up as a toddler, you felt, this is my family, this is my blood. Did you feel any difference? In terms of feeling different within the family, no. Okay. But in terms of there being uh, signs that mm. there was something unique about me, there were signs, and I, I got this from school. When I, I went to nursery school, I found some boys who would taunt me and some of them refused to play with me and stuff like that and they would call me names and so i i asked my mom and she told me no just leave them alone they're just boys they don't know what they're doing mm -hmm. but i think what that did to me it made me inquisitive and, and, and a bit curious and and with time i got to know what was going on and uh, i i remember what happened when i was eight years old um a friend of mine the mom was expectant mm -hmm. And after some time, they got a, a little sister. And immediately, two months down the line, my mom comes home with a, with a boy, little, beautiful baby boy, and tells me, this is your brother. Mm -hmm. And what happened at that point, I could pick out the differences in how the, the, the two children came about. And now, connecting that with what the children had been telling me, mm -hmm. I, 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 was, I, I could feel the dots and know I also came this way. It's only that maybe at that age, I didn't quite understand adoption in the real sense of yes. what you're talking yes. about here, but I knew that must have been the case. It didn't bother me for some reason. Maybe I didn't quite, uh, didn't sink in well. So it never bothered me. I continued with life and that was it. So when did you find out? How did you find out that you were? That's how I found out. That's how you found out. <laughs> yeah. So you, you didn't ask your parents per se and say, you know? I didn't ask any question. So you just figured it out? Yeah. Did you come to tell them and say, I know I'm adopted? Did you actually mm. make that revelation? No, you I never, never did, did that. And now that you knew, okay, I'm, I'm not part of this family, did you feel a need to reach out maybe to your biological parents and find out who, who they were? Actually, one of the things that amazes me to date is the fact that even after knowing, it never bothered me oh. at all. It, life just continued and I think for some reason I thought um, this, 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 these things happen. There's nothing abnormal about what happened about me. It happens. This is the world and I continued. Actually, um, the only point at which the issue of adoption bothered me, yeah. I was an adult at the age of 20. Throughout my childhood, my teenage, it was never an issue at all. It actually became an issue when I lost my mom. Okay. I think at that point, that's when I started realizing there's something inside I could tell that there was something I've lost that, uh, and, and there was something about it. I, I couldn't figure it out, but I knew there was something. Yeah. But throughout my childhood, teenagehood, it was never an issue at so all. So after you lost your adoptive mom, did you then feel the need to maybe fill that void and try and find your biological mother? Mm, not really. I wouldn't put it that way. Okay. I think what happened when I lost her, um, th there's something that came over me in terms of uh, the loss was too big for me. Because at that point I could figure out um, this is the person who is literally my linkage between myself and the family and the society. Uh -huh. And so th that loss is what was disturbing me. Mm. But I also put it this way, in terms of uh, the need or the desire to know one's roots. I would not think of it in terms of having been triggered by the death of my mom, okay. but I would think of it more as a natural process that an, any adopted person goes through, mm. that curiosity. And 
maybe to understand this, j j just figure this out, that uh, you have your mom, your biological mom, you grew up with them, you look at them and you see your face in them, you see, you see your nose in them, you see your mm -hmm. behaviors, and you can see them. Yeah, yeah. And then imagine now, with that same information you know, just imagine you, never, you have never known that. You don't know about her, you have never seen her, you never heard about her, you don't know how she looks like, you, you know nothing. Yeah. I would imagine that naturally, you would want to at least know something. Yeah. So the, the desire to, to search and to know is not so much about whether my adoptive mom is there or not, whether she is good or bad. It's, it's an innate feeling mm. within any human being. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's only that now when you are adopted, it, it's very real. It's exactly. very real. No matter how you want to assume it's not there, it's real. The fact of the matter is there is some woman somewhere, whether dead or alive, who gave birth to me. That's a truth that yeah. can never be changed. Amazing. And, and Karazom, you're at the beginning of this process. Yeah. You've just adopted uh, a child. Take us through why you decided you wanted to adopt. Mm -hmm. The first time we, the thought of adoption came into our minds, me and my husband, was in 2013. Mm -hmm. I had been married for four years because I got married in 2009. So, and throughout this period, we didn't conceive and we'd, we'd been seeing doctors. So in 2013, I mentioned it to him. Why don't you, don't we get into adoption? Um, at that time, a friend of ours had adopted. And so I thought, well, would could adopt. Mm. And he told me, oh yeah, we'll think about it. And that, we didn't discuss it anymore until 2016. In November, he told me, the adoption story, we could now do it. So that's when now we started the journey. But for me, why we chose to adopt was we were still young. Yeah. And as we waited for our biological children, we thought it would be nice to raise a child mm. even as we wait. Right. Yeah. So do you have any biological children mm -hmm. now? Okay. Yeah. Um, so when that began, you found a beautiful baby girl you felt she, she's ours. Um, how did you begin that emotional bond and connection? Because it's one thing to go through the paperwork, go through the legal process, but now it's having to become a parent, become mom and dad to this, to this baby. Mm -hmm. We began our process in 2017, November. 2016, November. And we submitted our papers mm -hmm. in 2017, February. And then we received a call to get matched in 2018 May. <laughs> wow. Yeah. In, in between, because we really wanted a baby girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At some point, the agency calls and says, uh, you're a couple, so could you please change your mind and decide you wanted a boy? Because if you choose to have a boy, then in like a week's time, you'd have a boy. Wow. So we're like, no, we want a girl. And for us, it's been a faith and a, a faith journey because we had to wait all this long and we kept insisting we want a, a girl. Mm. So when we received the call in May of this year, uh, the agency called and said, there's this baby, you need to go and see her and then give us the social worker's number. So we contacted her, went to see the baby. The baby was tiny and nice and very tiny and very innocent. Yeah. And at first we thought, wow, Initially, we'd said we want to adopt between the ages of six and nine months. <laughs> and then we moved to 12 months yeah. to see if we'd get matched earlier. So when we looked at her, she was this tiny little baby. And uh, the social worker came and asked us, do you still want the baby? And we're like, yeah, do we have options of not having the baby? So yes. So we met the baby and we did the bonding. We did, um, that time we did one. The following week I was away, so mm. my husband and his mom did the next visit. And then after that, when I came back, we did a whole week of visits. Until now, we'd go to the home and we're trying to leave and she does not want us to leave. Wow. Yeah, so we were sure, oh, now she is comfortable. So now she's comfortable, she's at home with you, she's, she's officially your daughter. How did other people take to it? You know, friends, family, people who didn't see you pregnant 
but they see a baby uh, and they're wondering, okay, so what happened with this arrangement? How did you deal with, with people's reactions, for instance? And were some negative? The beautiful bit about our journey was when we decided to adopt, mm -hmm. we started talking about okay. it. Okay. So like our circle of friends and our family knew what we were intending mm. to do. So the ones who were probably negative didn't air it directly. But of course, there were some that were skeptical, but this is our course. So we made them understand this is what we want to do, and this baby is going to be our baby. Mm. Yeah. And there's always this debate when you do adopt, do you reveal at a point to the child that they are adopted or just leave it as a family secret, if you will? Do you feel that you'd eventually get to that point? Yes, okay. you need to. Mm. You need to disclose to the baby that they adopted. Actually, when we were going through the process, before the case committee she mentioned, mm. before they sit, you do uh, an interview and you get in a counselor to do counseling with you and she writes a report. So one of the things they tell you is at some point you have to reveal to this child and disclose that they are adopted. Okay. Yes. Okay. And let me ask this of you, Leah, because I know quite a few people have also been caught up in adoption scans. Um, payment. Mm -hmm. Is money involved in the adoption process? There is. Adoption societies have, uh, have certain fees that they charge and those fees are regulated by government. So okay. it's a specific amount of money and it's, it's regulated by government. They cannot charge above that, uh, above that fee. And then of course there's also legal fees and uh, different lawyers that charge mm -hmm. different fees. Okay. But I, what I would say is that if you've, done, I mean, if you've done other legal processes, adoption is not the most expensive legal process. Okay. You know, so um, you know, people say that fees are an obstacle, but I can say that as legal fees go, adoption is not the most expensive legal process. And then also there are people who offer to do adoptions pro bono. And you know, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, conversations going on around about the legal fees because I think the agency yeah. fees are not prohibitive. Yeah. But legal fees, it being an obstacle, worries. You know, it's it's you know, it's, it it gives you a reason to pause that should children miss homes because of legal fees. Mm -hmm. So although to lawyers we don't think it's too much, there we you know we we you know we are, we've been talking about different ways of making it, if the legal fees you know and, less expensive and around how much are, are you looking at just for people who are thinking about a ballpark figure in terms of legal fees i'm so afraid to say this because my lawyer friends will just <laughs> shoot me <laughs> well, this, is, this is a public concern <laughs> and you know i know just to give I know. A, yes a general i range. think um it's basically some maybe between fifty thousand and maybe up to Maybe 150. Please okay. don't kill me, my lawyer <laughs> friends, if you're charging more. <laughs> you saw she put me on the spot. Okay. But um, yeah, I think it's between, you'll probably pay between 50 and 150. Is that what you've heard? I, yeah, I yeah, sure. okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's there so about. But then there are also discussions about self representation. Mm -hmm. You can do, mm -hmm. you know, like for me in my farm, if you feel that, you know, that y you don't want uh, to pay, you know, the, the, the standard legal fees, then we can talk about maybe helping you through self-representation right. and do helping you with the paperwork and guiding you so that you're able to self-represent. There are a lot of, it's not a closed conversation, I can say, yeah. Okay. Simon, as we wrap up, a uh, word of advice you'd give to a child who has been adopted, they found out, many would not take it as well as you did. Um, but what kind of encouragement would you give them? Because it, it also causes some form of psychological trauma, if you will, or emotional, because you feel, where do I belong? And, and like you said, that nagging feeling of wanting to know, well, who brought me into this world? What would you tell them? I would think that, um, in fact, the person who we should be talking to mostly is a parent, because a lot of what affects the child uh, starts when they are young. And it's so much about how the, the, the process was handled when the child is still maybe below 10. Right. Um, if nothing has been done by the, age, by the age of 10, most of which the child cannot do by themselves, and they get into teenage, then you are most likely to have issues. So I think they, they, I would give advice to parents mostly that you must uh, be willing to understand the realities of your child. First of all, tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. 
to know that once you tell them the truth, you will have those hard questions. Where did I come from? And those questions are normal questions that anyone else would ask. You have to put yourself in that child's shoes. Don't think they are asking you those questions because they think you are not a parent enough. They are asking those questions because those are the building blocks of their identity. And if you don't walk them through that, when they get to teenage where normally children will go through identity issues, and you add that into the puzzle, yeah. then you're going to have trouble. Right. So let the parents look at their ch children in the eye, tell them the truth as early as possible. When the children ask hard questions, be willing to walk with them. Because ask yourself, if that question is hard on you as a parent, how hard is it on the child? On the child themselves, yeah. And if you love this child, would you let them walk through a situation that you yourself find difficult? What will it do to that child? So disclosure and Working with a child, I would imagine, is what I would call responsible parenting for mm -hmm. anyone who has adopted. Letting the child walk through that alone, and I'm sorry to say this, is irresponsible for you as a parent. And if you are claiming that's love, then there's something definitely wrong, wrong with your idea of love. Really quickly, uh, really quickly for the sake of viewers who are wondering, so what became of Simon? What is Simon doing now after your experience? Um, Actually, there's a very narrow line between Simon the person and Simon who works. Um, I work for a, an NGO called Challenge Family Focus and as an, adoption, an, uh, an advocacy officer. We mainly focus on family-based care for orphaned and vulnerable children. Mm -hmm. Adoption being one of those family-based options alongside foster care and kingship care. And um, I also double up as the administrator of a coalition of organizations working around the same area with the footprint in seven African countries. Um, we are in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, um, Rwanda, Sudan, Ghana, and South Africa. Great. So working in advocacy work, protecting the interests of the most vulnerable in society. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Karazom. What would you say to someone who's considering? Uh, they're on the fence, a bit hesitant and wondering, is it worth it? I mean, it's quite a commitment. What do you tell them? Number one. Adoption is not expensive. That's the myth. Yeah. Number two, an adopted child is not different from a biological child. And the other thing is there is a community of adoptive parents and adoptees and lawyers who come together to help you understand. So if you have questions, if you're stuck in the process, they will be there to guide you. So. It is possible, it's doable, and it's beautiful. All right. Thank you so much, Karazom, Tulea, and Simon for coming in and shedding more light on adoption.